These ugly looking polynomials, ooh. Um, however, we were discussing how important the leading term is. And here's the leading term. All the different stuff it does that that can help you move more smoothly through algebra. Here we have the leading term and what the highest power does doesn't matter what the sign is. The highest power alone controls the maximum number of real zeros, the maximum number of X intercepts and the maximum number of turning points. So just real quickly, let's go over it again. The highest power is three in this polynomial. So it's responsible for the fact that we'll have a maximum of three real zeros. We'll have a maximum of zeros, okay? But the most real zeros, that is numbers on the x-axis, the most real zeros we can have is three. Um, and the, uh, the most, the maximum number of x-intercepts we can have is three. But the maximum number of turning points, and here we have turning points, is two. The maximum number of turning points is always one less than the highest power. Incidentally, this does not have to have two turning points. It might only have one turning point. But two is the maximum number. Now here we have a nice ugly polynomial function, highest power six. So we know that the maximum number of real zeros will be six, the maximum number of x-intercepts will be six, and the maximum number of turning points will be five. And so on and so forth. Here, these terms are out of order. That should be the first term because it's the highest power term. That should be the leading term. And that tells us that the maximum number of real zeros is four, the maximum number of x-intercepts is four, and the maximum number of turning points is one less than that, which is three. Okay, so we talked about this last week, and we talked about end behavior. All right, and what end behavior does is, it doesn't describe the ups and downs in the middle. It talks about what happens as the X's go out toward positive infinity or go out toward negative infinity. So if your degree, that is if the highest power is an even number, two, four, six, and eight, for instance, um, and the leading coefficient is positive, that is the leading term is positive, then out on the ends, your graph is going to go up on the right and up on the left. And if the degree is even, just like this, but the leading term is negative, then out on the edges, the graph will go down on the left and down on the right forever. And if the degree of the polynomial is odd, like this one, if the degree of the polynomial is odd, 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, numbers that two will not go into evenly, but the leading term is positive, here it's negative, let's, and here it's, uh, uh, Let's see. Ah, here's one like that. The, uh, uh, the highest power is five, which is odd. So this is odd. And the leading coefficient, the number in front, is positive, and this is. 
so the LC is positive. Then I don't even have to graph this because I know that out on the edges at negative infinity, uh, at positive infinity and negative infinity, the graph is going to go up forever on the right and down forever on the left. So that's what this says. If the leading coefficient is positive and the degree is odd, you're going to have end behavior that looks like that. And if uh, the degree of the polynomial, the highest power, is an odd number, but the leading coefficient or leading term is negative, then these switch your graph on the edges will go up on the left and down on the right. So here we have an odd, odd degree and a negative leading coefficient. Then I know that this polynomial will look like this polynomial on the edges. As X gets close to negative infinity, the graph will go up forever, and as the graph gets close to positive infinity, the graph will go down forever. So it's a matter of just memorizing a few patterns. Okay, here we have an even degree. And a positive leading term, or the number is positive, the leading coefficient is positive. So I know that out on the ends, the graph will go up on the right forever and up on the left forever, but much more, much, much better than the way I drew it. This is what we talked about last week. The leading term test is the broad name for what we did last week. End behavior, multiplicity, um, maximum number of real zeros, maximum number of x-intercepts, maximum number of turning points. I didn't mention multiplicity just now, but we'll, we're gonna be going over it anyway. But other stuff, other stuff, in um, um, uh, function behavior, there is one that I left off, and that is, well, no, here it is right here, increasing, decreasing, constant. We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about relative maxima and minima. We're going, going to talk about finding the zeros of functions and the applications of function behavior. All of this is in your homework for this week. The factor theorem we might get to, but it's in your work for next week. So we're going to concentrate on what we're doing this week. So we're going to go now to increasing, decreasing, and constant. When the graph is increasing, decreasing, and constant, and on what interval on the x-axis are these actions happening? Okay, the part of the x-axis that matches the function behavior. We have to know that also. But first, we have to reorient ourselves and ignore the arrows. You have to learn to, for this question, you have to ignore the arrows. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to, how am I gonna do this? Well, I could just kind of mark through them. Ignore the arrows. Okay. Now, we think when we're talking about increasing, decreasing, and constant, 
we have to reorient ourselves. To not think of going up or going down, but to think of everything being from the left to the right. What increasing means is the graph is rising from left to right. So rise from left to right. Decreasing means falling, going down. fall from left to right. Everything is from left to right. Constant means flat. That's constant. Flat. From left to right. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to look at this line, this part of the graph. And I see that as I go from left to right, this is going down. That means this part of the graph is decreasing. This part of the graph is flat from left to right. So this is constant. This part of the graph is going up from left to right. So this is increasing. Oops. There. So that's what's going on here. And why don't I kind of color code these? Here's the decreasing. We'll let the constant stay blue. And here's the increasing. And we're decreasing from left to right. We're constant from left to right. And we're increasing from left to ooh, 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 left to right. That's what the graph is doing. Now over here though, we're asking a different question about the increasing, decreasing, and constant. Write the intervals on which the function is increasing. Write the intervals on which the function is decreasing. Write the intervals on which the function is constant. As strange as it feels, we're not asking about the y-axis. And that actually might make more sense. It does in the beginning. But what we're looking for is the intervals on the, <clears throat> excuse me, the intervals on the x-axis that match up with the graph and what it's doing. The interval on the x-axis that matches up with the graph when it's decreasing. And that would be all the way from negative infinity 
into, let's see, negative one, negative two, negative three, looks like this is negative three. The interval on the x-axis that match, oh, yeah, okay. The interval on the x-axis, here's the x-axis. So that's good to know. Let me erase this. So here's negative infinity, and here is negative three. So the part of the x-axis that matches up with this decreasing part of the graph is this part of the x-axis. I'm still gonna write negative three down here. OK. Now the part of the x-axis that, I want to make that a little thicker. The part of the x-axis that matches up with the constant part of the graph is up here on the, on the x-axis, going from negative three to one, two, three to positive three up here. This is the part of the x-axis that matches up with the constant part of the graph. And this is the part of the x-axis that matches up with the decreasing part of the graph. And this is the part of the x-axis that matches up with the increasing part of the graph. So now we're going to write those in interval notation, and then I'm going to tell you something else. The part of the x-axis where the graph is increasing goes from positive three to positive infinity. So let me write a three down here. From positive three to positive infinity. And the part of the graph, the, the part of the x-axis that matches up with the part of the graph that's decreasing goes from negative infinity to negative three on the x-axis. So I should also write that, I think, in the beginning anyway, on x-axis, because these intervals are on the x-axis, and that's so important for you to remember. And then this will be on the x-axis. OK. So going back, going back, there we are. The part of the x-axis that matches up with the part of the graph that's constant is the part of the x-axis from negative 3 to positive 3. OK, now we have to have a little talk because I bet at least one person and maybe everybody is wondering how come we don't use brackets? And the answer is whenever you're working with increasing, decreasing, constant, you never use brackets. There's a reason for that. Because a point cannot hold two identities at the same time. So would you say that positive three is part of the uh, increase, uh, is part of the 
Yeah, is part of the constant or is part of the increasing? Which? You see, you can't say because in a way it's part of both. So for that reason, we do not include the endpoints in our intervals. These are called open intervals because you never use a bracket. So I'm going to write that. Open intervals. OK, so now let's do another. This is more common. I mean, this is a good beginner case to I to um, identify what you're talking about. But now this is more normal, OK? Now something I want to do before I do anything else so that I don't get lost. I don't lose my X axis. I want to make it thicker and darker. OK, and I'm going to save that. There. Now I can write on it too. All right, notice we do have to pay a little attention to the arrows in the beginning because notice that the graph, this arrow means that the graph keeps going down. Now we're going to change, we're going to go into the direction mode in just a minute, but right now you have to know that the graph continues to go down and to the left. Down and to the left forever. And this graph is going to be flat on the right here, and it's going to continue to go to the right forever and ever and ever. So what this means is we're going to have to consider negative infinity and positive infinity. And now we're done. We're completely done with um, 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 the up and down part of this. Now we're going to look from left to right and only think about left to right, is the graph going up or going down? Well, the graph is going up from left to right. It's not pointy. OK, and the graph is going up from left. To right. Not squiggly. The graph is going down. From left to right. And the graph is constant from left to right and from left to right. OK, now I need to find the intervals on the X axis that match up with all of these. So, I hate to draw through negative infinity. Uh, 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 and I really hate for it to be blue when that's green. So I think, I think I'm going to erase these for a minute. And then I'll write them up above. Okay. 
So our graph is going up from here to here for this part of the x-axis. And our graph is going up for this part of the x-axis, a really short part of the x-axis, even though this is a really long line. And then it's not going up anymore. So I'm done with the green. So I might as well go over here to increasing. And now I need my infinities. So negative infinity is out here and positive infinity is out here. And there's the x-axis, but I'm gonna be marking on it. All right, so we have to figure out what are these intervals. Okay, negative infinity, to negative six and negative one to zero. You're about to find out that not only do we not use brackets, we never use brackets when we're talking about increasing, decreasing and constant, but there's something else we never do for better or worse. So, um, I, I, let me get this interval first and then I'll move over a little bit. No, no, no. Hope my cats aren't around. Here we go. Negative infinity to negative six. And then from negative one to zero on the x-axis, no brackets, and you know how we sometimes put a U in here? You don't do that here. Instead, you just put a comma because all you're doing is you're listing, making a list of the intervals where the graph is increasing. We don't stick them together with a U. Instead, we separate them with a comma. That's that was really hard for me to get used to when I was a student. All right, now decreasing the part of the X axis. That matches up with the decreasing part of the graph. Well, looks like it goes that far. So here you go. From negative six, negative five. What are these numbers? Negative eight, negative seven, negative six, negative five. Oh, that's part of a four. Never mind. Okay. So here's from negative six <clears throat> to negative four. And it doesn't go down anywhere anymore. So we're done with the down. Now let's move over so we can see everything. Switching to blue for constant. Okay, so the graph is constant and it matches up with the x axis between negative four and negative one. So negative four to negative one, let me write that down. Negative four to 
comma, so I won't forget and make a U. And then I come up here. Now this can be tricky. Remember you have to take this and look on the X axis as though we're looking at the shadow of this if the sun were up here. Okay, so the shadow would be down here on the X axis. This is the part of the X axis where the graph is constant. So I come over here, X is zero right there in the middle, and then infinity, so zero to infinity. And that's how you do increasing, decreasing, and constant. Any discussion, any questions? Ah, any questions about this? Okay. I like anything I can draw pictures with. OK. Now, I like it when they provide the numbers for you. Isn't that nice? That's really nice. Um, it's important to note the very, very strange window that we've got here. This graph goes from negative 14 to positive 14 and negative 50 to positive 50. So even though it looks like the graph goes through the origin, it doesn't. OK, this this point right here is the point zero comma negative one. So it's actually below. Let me make this bigger. It's actually below the X axis. OK. Kind of difficult to figure that out sometimes. OK, anyway, they give us the points. Look at this. The graph goes like this and like this and like this. This is not the highest point on the graph. Because the graph keeps going up, 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 up forever. And this is not the lowest point on the graph because the graph keeps going down, 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 forever. This point is lower than that point and this point is higher than that point. But, and this is a concept. I'm gonna make it in red. In its own little area, like this area that we call a neighborhood, in its neighborhood, this is the top of the hill. Look at that, you go up the hill, you go down the hill, maybe on a snowy day like this, you toboggan down the hill. That would be great fun. And there's the top of the hill. When you have a situation like this, this right there, the top of the hill, zero one, is the relative. Let me see if I can move over. There. Relative 
maximum point. And the relative maximum maximum value is negative one. It's very similar to working with quadratic functions. And one more thing, the relative maximum value, I'm going to call it the rel max value, is located at X equals zero. And that's where the zero comes into this. This is the relative maximum value, and this is where it's located. This is the X coordinate, this is the Y coordinate. So a good way to think about this, at first anyway, is the top of the, of the mountain, the top of the hill, and the bottom of the valley. And you're going to toboggan from here down to here. Whee! And then you have to go back up. Maybe not as much fun. Okay, so we're going to, given this information, we're going to answer these questions about our maximum, um, our relative maximum point and our relative minimum point and the increasing and decreasing intervals. That is, the intervals on the x-axis that match up with the increasing and decreasing. Okay, first, the relative maximum value is the y coordinate of the relative maximum point, negative one. And it's located at its x coordinate, x equals zero. Now, just in case you can't see this clearly, this point, well, we ought to change color, shouldn't, shouldn't we? Let's just go to black. Ah, oh, let's go to green. No, let's go to black. This is our relative minimum point. The relative minimum value is negative 33. Remember, we go all the way down to negative 50 here. And negative 33 is located at x equals 8, which is up here. And these are counting by 2, 4. How are they doing that? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Ah, 8. Yes, 8 is right here. eight on the x-axis. So, the relative minimum value is negative 33, and it's located at x equals eight. Okay. 
and K. Now we have to switch because they're asking about decreasing and increasing, increasing and decreasing. So now I'm going to get rid of this color coding if I can. Oh, bummer. All right. Okay, and put black in there instead, because that's nice and neutral. And I'll know for next time, I really need to write this in black, because if I keep up with my usual way of doing things, I'm going to color code the increasing side, the increasing parts of the graph, are green. And the decreasing sides, the decreasing part of the graph is red-ish. It's actually dark violet. And we're going from left to right for the whole thing. Well, for the increasing, decreasing whole thing. OK, so now all I have to do is match up the increasing and the decreasing parts of the graph with the X axis. So I'll do that. Um, here we have green, green. OK, here's green. And that matches up with this part of the X axis from negative infinity to x equals zero. And then this part of the increasing matches up with this part of the x-axis from eight to positive infinity. And the decreasing parts of the graph match up with this part of the x-axis from x equals zero to x equals eight. So I'm going to write the answers, but then I'm going to come back and we have to talk a little more about this. So the intervals on which the function is increasing are green from negative infinity Whoop, it's way down there. Negative infinity to zero on the x-axis. Then I put a comma, and we're going to go from eight to positive infinity. Make sure that's right. Yes, it is. And the decreasing part of the graph goes from x equals 0 to x equals 8. OK. You are always going to have the situation in which your relative maximum, now this may seem very obvious to you. The relative maximum point is located where there's increasing on the left and decreasing on the right. That makes sense. If you're only looking from left to right, and this is the top of the hill, you had to go up the hill to get to the top of the hill and then down the hill to get to the valley. But that's the way it is. If you take calculus, th this is going to end up being something that you look at very closely. 
and down here too. A relative minimum point is always going to be located where on the left, the line is decreasing and on the right, the line is increasing. Because after all, from the top of the hill to the bottom of the valley, you had to go down to get to the bottom of the valley. And now you've got to climb out of it. So I, I think it seems kind of obvious, but again, if you plan to take calculus or even survey of calculus, which is shorter, um, yeah, you're going to have that. 